Life coach and author Dana Dimitri has written Change Your Habits, Change Your Life, a proven plan for healthy living. Dana, you say right at the beginning of your book that destructive thoughts are where the trouble begins. It's exactly right, Moira. I mean, we look at people struggling with whether it's overeating or smoking or even obsessive shopping, and people try to change their behavior. All the energy goes into, I've got to change, and they, they muster up willpower. And yet, most people don't keep weight off. They don't change their habits permanently. So often they struggle and think, what's wrong with me? And it's because it really is the lies they've been believing for so long that drives that behavior. And so really for a dynamic change, we get, need to get to the root of the issue, which is our unhealthy thinking. Dana, I just, looking at you, you look fantastic. Thank you. Yes. You look fabulous. And I don't think a lot of people watching would be able, would, would know that you've had a huge battle with this issue. What, I have. What, what have you gone through? Well, as a young woman, I started to diet at about 13 years old. I looked at my body, and I looked at my girlfriends, and really, I was not fat. I truly was not fat, but I thought, I'm not skinny enough. And this is years ago. I'm 57, so this is back... 40 plus years ago, before the kind of pressure we have today. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. something built inside of us, I think, says, you know, we, we do this comparison game. And I started mm -hmm. to diet because I thought I was fat. And again, I think it goes even from an early age, I believed a lie. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not thin enough. And so by the time I was 16, I was on a very dangerous rotation diet. I was binging and purging up to five times a day in college. Wow. Oh. And then the rotation was because I was so frustrated and disgusted disgusted with my behavior, I started to take diet pills. So I was doing oh, yeah. one destructive behavior and then I was switching to another. Now those diet pills are speed. Exactly. The ones you exactly. were Exactly. And yeah. I was getting them in high school. Wow. Um, and wow. of course the problem is even worse today, but as young women especially, we cave into these lies that we're not thin enough, we're not mm -hmm. pretty enough. The problem has gotten even worse. Mm. And change your habits is not just about the struggle of weight, it's about the struggle of changing unhealthy habits, habits of the mind, habits that uh, actually result in unhealthy behavior, and it could be any manifestation of that. But I just have such a passion, especially for helping young women and women of all ages to get to the core of the issue and mm -hmm. change those destructive thoughts because ultimately uh, we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind and, if we put the truth in. And you talk a lot about in your book healthy self-talk. Yes. Because as you're talking about these negative things that are coming at you, what culture and what an, or your boyfriend is saying to you, Yes. you're saying you need to respond with healthy self-talk. Exactly. And it, you know, sometimes people get a little bit worried about that as Christians. <laughs> we think that sounds a little new age, but God designed our brains so that the most dominant thought mm -hmm. wins. And so you have to ask yourself, what do I say to, to myself? We all talk to ourselves. We just don't oh, always, yeah. you know, we're not always aware of it. <laughs> but am I, you know, do you get up in the morning and look in the mirror and go, hey, gorgeous? Or do you think, oh, you're so fat. You're so ugly. You're yeah. such a loser. Too often, we've heard negative things. We get the message from the media that we're not pretty enough. Everything's about beauty. And, yeah, right. and mm -hmm. it's just over the top. And so we need to learn how to talk healthfully. And I've made CDs for my clients for years because they don't know how to talk to themselves. It's not anything special about the CD other than it's a healthy message that teaches them how to speak truth into their own lives in the areas where they struggle. And so I just encourage all women, all people to, to get in tune with what are you saying to yourself most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so often the negative emotions that we experience on a regular basis are a good indicator of what we're saying to ourselves. So give us an example of what you would say. So yeah. I, well, look, I look in the mirror and go, hey, gorgeous. Well, <laughs> I mean, we want to, you know, we really do want to honor God with the mm -hmm. whole picture. And that's why when I wrote Change Your Habits, it's about taking a biblical approach and, mm -hmm. and filtering everything through the truth of the word. But yes, I mean, God did create you as, as the person that you are. And so rather than going, I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too fat, I'm too this, but to say, God, thank you mm. for the incredible person you made me, not to lift myself up to be egocentric. I say there's a difference between self-confidence and Christ confidence. Mm. And so we mm. want to exude a confidence that comes from knowing who we are in His image, our identity well grounded in Christ. Yeah. And that makes us, you know, actually have a beauty that comes far from anything that's, that's skin deep. Mm -hmm. So we talk to ourselves in healthy ways and, and yeah, we say some good, good solid <laughs> truth. Okay, now speaking now, of health, I think we should note that you're a nurse. I have a background oh. as a registered nurse. Yeah, we're getting uh, a medical thank perspective you. in yes. all this. Yes, so well. I have personal history, right. and that's where the passion comes from. But I also have the medical background and, and studied the human brain a lot, which is fascinating how God designed our brain. Can you like yes. elaborate on that a bit? Because that was the first when I read that in your book, it was the first time I've ever heard of it that we actually are 
neur neuron pathways. Exactly. Right? Yes. That they actually change in almost size. Is that it? Yes, or? exactly right. So when we say That's certain things over and over again, physiologically, that changes. You've got it. I never exactly. knew that. That before. is amazing. It's yeah. a powerful truth, mm -hmm. and you think about. In, in the human brain, the, the things that you've said to yourself over and over and over, or have heard from your parents, from your friends, from your spouse, whomever, those neuron pathways are like super highways in your brain. I mean, they take over. They're, they're our automatic pilot. You wonder why you do what you do sometimes, mm -hmm. because you've got these neuron pathways that are very, very large. The little messages, maybe it's the new message you want to give yourself. I'm in control of my eating. I can, you know, I can do this or I can do that. It's like a little back road in your mind. It's overgrown. But the way you change it is by repetition. Mm -hmm. You identify the lies you believe and replace them with truth. But it's not just, oh, there's the lie, here's the truth, yeah. I'm fixed. Yeah. Yeah time because it takes about 21 days for those neuron pathways even to begin to change. It doesn't days. flip, 21. it starts to change. And that's why behavioral psychologists for years have said it takes 21 days to change a habit. Mm -hmm. But the truth is it takes 21 days to begin to change a habit. Wow. So mm -hmm. we need to repeat those healthy, positive messages over and over mm -hmm. and over. Now, Dana, one thing that you said in your book that really stuck out to me, um, there's a prayer in your book where you talk about um, praying to God about helping you break from the bondage of food. Now that is something that really stuck out to me because I've never thought of food as a form of bondage, even though at this point, now that I'm thinking about it, it is a form of bondage. Anything can be a form of bondage when it, we feel like it's taken control of our life. Now, yeah. it hasn't. I've never seen a cookie jump in someone's mouth. It's not in control. <laughs> but, really? I thought I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, did, that happened to me too. <laughs> we like to claim it has. But, but we really can become in bondage to something. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it appears that way because of our behavior. And so we think, I can't control this, but we can. And we really need to, to strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And I think when we ha say that prayer, we're recognizing, Lord, I'm putting something above you at least part of my day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm out of control in this area and I'm letting food take over versus you.